I want you to um, talk a little bit about momentum. And the concept of momentum is, it is related to energy, but it's uh, uh, distinct and it's, uh, well, uh, uh, let me um, do the simulation I want you to do and we'll talk about it. Let's see, oops, uh, get rid of this. So to talk about momentum, mm, let's, so you're, um, so this is a bit uh, jumping ahead of topics that people will have read. Um, so this is from chapter five, um, your textbook. Uh, so <laughs> let me just show you the simulation because if I go into definition, I think it's gonna be boring and will take a lot of time. Yeah, regular, let me go back to regular time. Um, all right, um, let's see, what do I want to do? I think I want to be able to add, um, apply force again. So let me not follow. I want to be able to toggle it. Um, all right, that seems good enough. Um, let's see. So we were looking at earlier how as I apply force that um, it speeds up, it increases in velocity and, oops, um, and, um, and I want it, I associate it with how, by applying force over a distance that gave this thing kinetic energy and it's rolling on from that. Um, momentum is more useful idea when you want to start describing interaction between objects. So let me bring in a second object here. So I'm just gonna clone it and move it a little bit here. Actually, uh, let me run the simulation. Yeah, that, that's the best way to <laughs> have it resting on the ground. Um, so, uh, well, let, let's just, uh, uh, let me run the simulation, have these two things interact and see what we get from that. Um, I guess these things are a little bit too big. Okay, turn off the force. All right, that looks like regular collision that you probably have seen. And, oh, I guess I should have had a velocity here. Um, actually, let me undo it, clear. So we are monitoring velocity of these two things. And um, this is kind of what it looks like when they collide. The first object slows down, the second object speeds up. And I almost want to say there's a connection between these two objects. So just before a collision, the first object had a speed of two, about close to two meters per second. After collision, it slowed down to about half meter per second. And the second one, it sped up and um, 0 0.7 meters per second. And they don't quite, I guess uh, what I wanted to be able to say is that these two add up to the same value, but they don't really, um, because 0.5 plus 0.7 is 1.2, that's not quite two. But you can also see that as they collide, there's a bit of a complicated interaction going on. And I really want to have a situation where the only two objects interacting are these two balls. And this complicated thing, it's coming from friction with the ground. So let me undo these things. And what I want to do is I want to set material properties so that they have zero friction with the ground. That'll help me um, illustrate what I want to illustrate. Because that'll make the interaction simpler. Now I truly have a setup, uh, which I can only do in simulation where one object interacts with the other object and that's the only interaction I have. All right, let's run the simulation, toggle on for a bit and stop it here. And as they collide, now it's much more simple. You can kind of see that it's a simplified and then it also doesn't roll, um, it's just sliding. So um, there's a, some kind of a conserved thing here. Um, so the first ball had a speed of almost two meters, well, about two meters per second before it collided. 
And in the collision interaction, the first ball slowed down to 0.5 meters per second. The second ball sped up to 1.5 meters per second. So when you add these two together, they add up to two. So there's some conserved quantity here, but uh, this conserved quantity, it's not kinetic energy because if you uh, go through the formula that you are given in chapter four, the one half mass times speed squared, then you'll find that um, um, when you add up those two things together, that kinetic energy actually decreased in this interaction. So it's uh, some other quantity, a quantity other than kinetic energy that if we, uh, that uh, whose conservation could explain this interaction. And that quantity is momentum. Ma and uh, in chapter five, your textbook will define momentum as mass times velocity. So instead of being velocity squared, it's uh, just the velocity. It, there's no square there. So that's why if we just add this speed with this speed, then it goes back to the original value. And um, you, I can actually change the setting so that the collision actually does conserve energy. What I need to do is uh, uh, fiddle with that quantity that was labeled as restitution. Or uh, I like to call it elasticity, but this simulation calls it restitution. So let me change that. So making this one will make the collision what we call elastic collision, a collision that conserves kinetic energy. And you can see what the difference is like now. So let me run the simulation again. I'll try to replicate the previous one as closely as I can. And as they collide, this time you see, oh, the first ball comes to a complete stop and the second ball is now moving at the exact same speed the first ball was. So all the kinetic energy first of all had, one half, one half times mass times the speed squared is now transferred over to the other ball. So this is, and so kinetic energy is conserved and two, momentum is also conserved because um, two, so zero plus 2.074 is equal to zero plus 2.074. So your textbook will go over that uh, um, the section that talks extensively about the collisions, elastic collisions and inelastic collisions, that's sections 5.4 and 5.5, um, which I hope you will have fun with over the weekend. And um, so these interactions, if we try to describe it in terms of kinematics and dynamics, they can be quite complicated and um, which is why I'm, I'm not even trying to. But the ideas of energy and momentum give us a way to describe it, have some simple expressions that even in this conceptual physics class where we try to use as little mathematics as possible, we can, uh, there are some simple mathematical relationship that we can work out that will give us um, um, some quantitative results that we can look at and that agrees with experimental or at least the results of simulation. 